In this video, we're going to look at trigonometric ratios, which is the basic uh, beginning in, um, of trigonometry, your study of trigonometry. Um, trigonometry deals with triangles, but in later, more advanced math, you're going to also deal with uh, circles um, and graphs and functions. So, um, not going to go into too much detail about trigonometric functions. Um, and their properties and why they came about. But in general, when we when I say trigonometric ratios, I'm talking about the sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, these are um, these are actually the functions. These are the trigonometric functions. So I'm not yet talking about the ratios. So the trigonometric function, so it's just like any function where you have f of x, uh, but the sum it's sine of x, for example, cosine of x. And what these trigonometric functions do is that when you give them an input x, it's going to spit out an output. Um, this x, though, has to be an angle. So their input is angles. And what it's, what it's going to give out is a ratio. Um, now, you can skip to the introduction of this and go to the main calculations, but it's useful to understand these properties. Now, the ratio is what? Well, um, sine, cos, and tan, these are the short forms. So sine, cos, and tan deal with right angle triangle. So whenever we talk trigonometric ratios, only think right angle triangle. In later, more advanced math, uh, more advanced trigonometry, sorry, um, not too advanced, but later on you're going to use sine rule and cosine rule rules, not the ratios, just the rules. Um, and these are for non right angle triangles. But in this video and for trigonometric ratios, you only use right angle, right angle triangles and And I'm writing it in capital just so that you'd remember and highlighting it just so you remember. So it's only for right angle triangles. Um, and in right angle triangles, you have uh, three sides. So each side has a specific label. The side opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Um, and then these sides actually have names, and it relates to the sine, cos, and tan. Um, and these names, and they alternate. It could be one could be here, the and then the other could be here, or they could swap depending on the question. So one is the opposite, and the other is adjacent. And these are sides. These are the labels of the lengths. And what these trigonometric ratios do is that if I take sine and my input is an angle, so I'm going to define the angle by theta. So theta is my angle. It is equal to, the output will be equal to this uh, me taking the, um, the opposite length and dividing it by the hypotenuse. So that's why they're called ratio, because it's the ratio of the lengths. The cosine does a um, similar thing if I give it an angle, but it's going to give me the ratio of the adjacent length. Let's say it was 5, and then divided by the hypotenuse. Let's say it was 10. So if I say 5 divided by 10, it's going to be the same as me putting in the angle here. Uh, not just any angle, by the way. I'm going to tell you what, which angle you're going to pick. And then tan is actually the opposite over adjacent. And the acronyms we use for these are, we take the letter of the trig, uh, and then the first letters of the ratios and the numerator denominator order. So this will be so, and then ka, and then toa. And this is something that will be ringing in your head every single math lesson. And until you graduate, that's probably the only thing you're going to remember from math class. It's Sokka Toa, these three um, acronyms. So it stands for sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is opposite over adjacent. Um, and the angle in there is specific. So let's say um, I give you. Um, let's say I give you a specific one, so I, um, 
say I have, let's go quite big numbers. Um, let's say this is one and the hypotenuse is two. Um, and the angle I have is here. And let's say this angle is 33. Let's go 33. Um, it won't be as accurate, but let's try it. So 33. Um, now, if I, when you label your triangle, you always need to start with the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse. Now, if this is my angle, this is my focus angle, whatever is opposite to it will be the opposite length. So opposite, this is the length opposite, so I'm going to label this as opposite. Because this is next to it, I'm going to label it as adjacent. Adjacent means next to it. Um, so if my angle was actually, just to show you a contrast, if my angle was actually here, then this will be hypotenuse. Remember, label hypotenuse first. This will be adjacent, and this will be the opposite because it's opposite the angle. So notice how the labeling switch just because the angle switch. So that's the m main thing you need to know. First is to label your triangle. Um, second is to, uh, well, what we're going to do is just test the ratio. But in the questions you're going to get, either you're missing the angle or you're missing one of the lengths. Um, so we know that it should fit to this ratio. So sine of my angle is 33. Make sure that your angles are in degrees in your calculator, um, because if not, if it's on radian, you're going to get a different answer. So sine 33 should be equal to the ratio of opposites, which is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. And you can check this in your calculator. Uh, sine, cos, and tan have buttons in your calculator. Um, there's also sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. If you press shift or uh, on a Casio calculator or second on a um, Texas graphic calculator. Um, so if you just do sine 33, If you do sine 33, then you should be able to get the um, the ratio of 1 over 2. Now, if I put sine 33 in my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.54, which is very close to 0 0.5. Now, the reason is the angle is actually 33.3 .3 recurring. So um, the actual more accurate number is sine 100 over 33. So if you plug in 100 over 33 in your calculator, you're going to get um, you're going to get something very close to 0 0.5. So um, 100 over 33, um, not 30, 100 over 3, not 33. So this is just to demonstrate what these ratios do. Now to actually solve the questions, you're either going to be missing, as I mentioned, an angle or a length. Um, so I'm going to discuss what to do though. In this case, so let's start with. Um, you can pause the videos in here and try these questions. Um, we're gonna try with missing lengths, so we're gonna try and find the lengths labeled. Um, so for the first one, you we're gonna write the sakatoa here, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna label. So this is my hypotenuse, and. This is the opposite, and this is the adjacent, okay, with relation to this angle. Um, now, what I need is the opposite, so I need this. Let me underline it. Um, I don't have the hypotenuse, so I can't use this anymore. I obviously can't use this, but I have the adjacent, so I have this one. And I have the angle, so I'll use this. So underline the thing that you need and tick the things that you have. And if you have two ticks and one underline only, then you are um, good to use this. So in this case, it's going to be tan theta opposite over adjacent. And you're just going to put in the numbers in there. So tan of 46 is equal to opposite. Uh, over adjacent, which is 3. 
I'm going to keep opposite because if I write h, it's, you're going to get confused. Um, and you're going to solve it for the opposite length. So what you're going to do in this case is just cross multiply. So you get 10, 46 times 3 equals to the opposite. And so the opposite is equal to, um, in your calculator, make sure that when you write 10, 46, you actually close the bracket after the angle. So you're going to get 3.1. Uh, I think it's in oh, centimeters, um, which makes sense. Um, it's not too big of a number. It's not a weird number. Three centimeters would make sense for this. So not in terms of the scale, but in terms of the length. If I got 300, then it would have been a bit weird. Um, so we're getting this length, and that's sorted. So, um, and we try this again for the second one. This would be a good time to pause the video and try so you have, um, let's say, both the angle, the length. So we have hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Again, this is opposite to it, this next to it, and this length is opposite the right angle. So we need the hypotenuse. And the way I know what we need is by these labels, by the way. So anything, these, these. I've put letters to show the length that I need. Um, so I need the hypotenuse, which means I can't use this. Um, I also have the adjacent, so this, and obviously I have the angle, so this one. So I have the angle here as well and all of them, but the only one that has two ticks right now is the cos. So we're going to use cos theta is uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so cos of 20.5 is 6 over the hypotenuse. You can write x if you want. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do right now is, again, cross-multiply. If you're more better with algebra, you can skip the long steps I'm doing. Uh, but this is in favor of those that need all the additional steps. So um, we're going to cross multiply. So it will be hypotenuse times the, so multiplied. Let me start using x. OK, so it's going to be x cos of 20.5 equals to 6. It's just 6 times 1. Um, and so to find x, I'll have to divide by cos 20.5. Okay, so you can plug this in your calculator again, so cos 20.5, and you're going to get 6.4 centimeters. Um, does it make sense? Yeah, 6.4 is bigger than 6. Remember, the hypotenuse is the biggest length. Um, so we have this. By the way, once you have the hypotenuse, you can use either Pyth Pythagoras to find the third side or use any. Um, so if we need the opposite, I can use tan or sine to find the opposite length. Um, because I now have, I have the opposite and adjacent. I have the um, hypotenuse as well. Um, so 6.4, the trick here is to just know what to do. So if your unknown is in the numerator, you'll notice that you just multiply the numbers. If your unknown is in the denominator, you'll notice that you're actually, you're switching the, so if I'm looking from here to here, you're actually switching the position of x and cos 20.5. And as for the third one, so we have, we have, this is the hypotenuse. And this is the opposite and adjacent. And you have we need the opposite, so it's this and this, so we don't need this anymore. And we have the hypotenuse, so we have the hypotenuse. This doesn't have the hypotenuse, and so we can use sine. Now there are instances where you have more you have an option of more than one. Um, but then that means you could use Pythagoras. So we use sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 
So we have sine sine of 26 is equal to um, the opposite, which is unknown, over 10. And so I can cross multiply, so I get 10 times sine of 26 is equal to the opposite. And so the, the opposite is equal to, now usually we don't keep on writing opposite, we, I could use m. Uh, usually algebra questions have x, so you can continue with x. Um, so 10 sine of 26 is just 4.8. Three, eight, so that's three significant figures, and I think the answer are centimeters. And it makes sense because it's less than the hypotenuse. Remember, hypotenuse has to be the biggest line. So this is how to find the missing uh, length. If I want to do a missing angle, I'm going to go through this quickly, as in I'm not going to do the sine, cos, and tan. Um, I'll do it briefly once the labeling. But to find the angle is actually much easier, but you will need an extra uh, button in the calculator. Um, so for the first one, um, we need to find the angle. And let's label it first. So we have hypotenuse. Colors. We have hypotenuse. This is opposite my angle, and this is adjacent to my angle. So we have the opposite, and we have the adjacent. So we have opposite and adjacent, so I'm going to use tan. Um, so this time, you'll have to be ticking to a length. So we're not ticking the angle, because we don't have a buzz. So we all need the angle here. But the other one where I have all the lengths um, would be with tan. In here, you have the opposite. You have the hypotenuse, so you do a sine. In here, you have the um, adjacent and the hypotenuse, so you'll use cos. Um, for the first one, so we have tan of theta is equal to um, opposite over adjacent. And I know that tan of theta is equal to the well, opposite 9.5 over 7. Now, the way to solve this is you do what we call the inverse of tan. And you, can't, you cannot divide by tan. There's no such thing as dividing by tan because it's a function. It's like saying if you have 3 and then a function here equals to 5, it's like you saying I'm going to... Um, I'm going to divide by f of x. Um, it's, it's a function. It does something. Unless you know what f of x is, um, you can just divide by it. As in, it won't really give you the answer because it won't do anything. Um, again, unless you know what f of x is. So theta, in order to do the opposite of tan, we do what we call tan inverse. And so this is the inverse. And you find it by going shift and then tan, or um, second and then tan. So you're going to get that negative, uh, the inverse. And you're just going to put this in there. So no cross multiplying required, no um, No reordering required. So I've just put this in my calculator. So I've done it to three significant figures, and that's the degree. And you can always check your answer. So by going back to um, as if you're trying to find one of the lengths. Um, so in here, we said we have the opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use cos. So it's going to be cos inverse of the adjacent. Oh, sorry. It's not the adjacent. Um, it's not cost as well. So we have, see that's why labeling is important. So we have hypotenuse, this is opposite, and we have adjacent. So um, hypotenuse opposites, we'll have to use sine. So sine, I can even skip this, because I know it's just sine inverse of the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
So if I put this in my calculator, I'm going to get 48.59 degree. Um, third one, we have the hypotenuse, we have opposites, and we have adjacent. And so I have adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse, I'll have to use cos. So theta is just cos inverse of um, the adjacent, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, which is 12.5. And that will be 36.9 degrees uh, to three significant figures. Um, so in general, when you're trying to find the angle, you're always going to use sine inverse. If you're going to find the length, then you have to use um, cross multiplying and so on. Um, it's also good to check your answers if you need to. Um, also, you'll whatever you're going to get as the fraction, it has to be um, less one or less. Um, because you'll get an error as soon as you get an error when sign. So let's say I, so this is wrong, but if I, if I did sine inverse of 8 over 6, um, I'm going to get an error in my calculator. It's just going to say error because they don't deal, sign, trig ratios don't deal with negative, with uh, numbers um, that are greater than 1. And so you're going to get an error. And that should be an indication that you flip the numbers or something, because the ratio has to be smaller um, than one. Um, hopefully, this was a clear video. Mainly, just understand the, the letters, what they mean. Uh, firstly, label. Look what happened when I didn't label. So label, only use it with the right angle triangles. And remember the process when you need to find um, length and when you need to, you need to find the angles.